nothing smart. Park. No, we're not doing smart park. Why? Why are we not doing? We have a Verizon <laughs> limo. It's not a limo, sweets. We have <laughs> chauffeur service from Emirates. Thank you, Emirates, for sponsoring this video. <laughs> they are Thank not sponsoring for this video. Being shy, sponsor us. <laughs> When you fly to Nairobi from New York, you have quite a few different airlines to choose from. Kenya Airways is the best option if you want a non-stop flight. But we decided to connect through Dubai since flying business class on the Emirates A380 has been on our aviation bucket list for a long time now. One of the perks of Emirates business class is that you get complimentary chauffeur drive service to and from the airport. So happy we finally get to fly business class. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we were in that long line, and it was not fun. No, it wasn't. So. Not a lot. Okay, I am unreasonably excited to use Clear again because we've been flying JetBlue so much out of Terminal 5 that we haven't used Clear in like six months or something. So, finally get to do it. Boop, 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 boop. Having seats. They're dating because they're dating. <laughs> it's like sweet Vaseline. <laughs> it's not bad. Sean with her description. <laughs> Can I see a fit check? Got my new sneakers. I'm nice. Gonna see a sweatshirt. I'm matching with Ella today. Ella, let me see your fit check. Ooh, it's too cheesy. Your, your ballerina moves. I got your spit. <laughs> <laughs> tiny Pepsi and tiny, what's the other one? 7-Up. Seven 7-Up, seven nice. Oh, you're watching Boss Baby? Yeah, I'm gonna watch Boss Baby. Okay, Boss tell Baby me, too. Tell me how it goes, because me and Ella are gonna watch it too. After that long flight, we were ready to freshen up. The Emirates Business Class Lounge at Dubai International Airport has showers, which is nice, but if you really want to treat yourself, there's an even better option. You can book a treatment at the spa. Okay, so that was super awesome. I feel like a whole new person. Highly recommend doing this. Um, it just feels so luxurious, not just to get a massage, but then to have a private bathroom to shower, do a little skincare, cleanse, all that stuff. And then it was time to catch our connecting flight to Nairobi. For this flight, we flew on the 777. It was still business class, but the seats on this aircraft are less spacious and they don't all have aisle access, so it's definitely not as luxurious of an experience as the A380. We landed in Nairobi just as the sun was coming up. We had arranged a VIP meet and greet service at the airport through Angama Mara, our safari lodge. And our expediter got us through immigration and customs in no time at all. John, who's on the Angama Mara team, met us and whisked us off from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, where we landed, to Wilson Airport, where we would be boarding the bush plane into the Masai Mara. Karibu Kenya. Which means? Welcome to Kenya. <laughs> Oh. There were so many surprises during this trip, but one of the biggest ones is that we saw wildlife before we'd even left Nairobi. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. We drove past Nairobi National Park, which is the only national park within the limits of a capital city. This park covers an area of 45 square miles and it's teeming with wildlife like lions, leopards, buffaloes, and over 400 species of birds. After about 45 minutes, we landed in the airstrip and we were met by our guide, who also happens to be named John. We got in the vehicle and set off towards the lodge. This John would be our companion for the rest of our stay, taking us out into the wilderness each day for new adventures. I don't think any of us were prepared for being surrounded by giraffes and zebras as soon as we got off the plane, but here they were. 
As we pulled up to Angama Mara, we got a very warm welcome from the staff. <laughs> Hello! We met Adam, who's the head photographer at the lodge. We would be working with Adam as well as his associates Robert and Eric on a series of photo shoots for the property during our stay. Then we set off to check out our adjoining tented suites. Ah, oh, ooh, look at that view. This bathtub is so pretty. Okay, so we settled into our beautiful tent and took a little nap, had a little bit of lunch, and now we're going to head out on a, a mini, mini drive. Uh, just a quick one to get into the swing of it, and then there's gonna be a barbecue tonight. First, we stopped by the map room where John gave us an orientation before our first game drive, going over safety protocols. He showed us photos of some of the most famous animals of the Mara, including the real Scar, who was the inspiration for the lion of the same name in the Disney movie Lion King. In this room, there's also a cool magnetic map where guests and guides can create a visual log of the specific locations of the species they see each day. As we got to this herd of impala, John explained that they live in a harem structure where one large dominant male overlooks a herd of females. The one who is strong here, goes and fight with him. If he wins, if he wins, he takes over the, the harem. Mm. But the males don't usually stay in power for long. But he doesn't usually stay more than three months. No, he doesn't. Because he just got lazy and fat. <laughs> we came across a solitary water buffalo, and John explained that older males often live alone. They tend to live a solitary life. We say um, they're enjoying their retirement benefit, their retirement <laughs> general. So all they do is play golf. <laughs> And then we came across our first elephants. And it's 720 pounds of food. We were about to head back to the lodge when John got a tip from one of the other guides in the Mara, and it was definitely worth a detour. I'm about to see a lion. Girls. The lion's in the tree. Get the tree. Seeing a lion on our first game drive ever was already cool, but then John got word of something even better, a whole pride of lions. Before this trip, I'd been stressing about getting the right cameras and zoom lenses for shooting video, but because we'd had so many back-to-back -back trips leading up to this one, I ended up running out of time to rent or borrow the right gear, so I had to make do with my iPhone. I shouldn't have worried. As you can see, the animals got so close that I didn't even need a zoom lens. All of this footage was shot on my phone. heading out for our drive this morning. We're gonna try to basically do it at sunrise, get some great photos with Adam. So we're excited. Good morning. Definitely one of the coolest breakfasts. No, the coolest breakfast we've ever had. Look at this. 
the zebras, the wildebeest just chilling in the back. We have about two, three more hours to go and there's no bathrooms nearby, so. I can't see you, Ella. We can't see tissues. you, Sean. We have bags to put the tissues in after. And you guys excited? And uh, there's a bush over there we're gonna... Bye bye, we're gonna go pee. Yeah. Okay, so what did you think of our first pee in the bush? We did it. Good job. Oh, marking your <laughs> That's right, we did mark our territory, just like how dogs do. After breakfast, we really lucked out. John got word that there were several cheetahs nearby, so we got to watch as they relaxed after their morning hunt. As if that wasn't cool enough, right after this, we got to see a jaguar. Jaguars can be pretty elusive, so we were really lucky to be able to see one. At first, it looked like it was just relaxing by itself in the tree. But then John told us to look at what was next to it. Turns out the jaguar had dragged a wildebeest all the way up into the tree and had been feasting on it for several days until only the skin and tail was left, dangling down from a branch. This is the official border into Tanzania. So that's Tanzania over there and we're not supposed to go in this way. <gasps> Serge, what are you doing? <gasps> oh, what are you doing? You're breaking the law. Come back here. <laughs> so what's it like over there? Oh my gosh, completely different kind of country. <laughs> the vibe is a little different in Tanzania than it is in Kenya. I mean, a lot of people it, don't know that. Yeah, it just hits but, um, different, right? going on and it's made a little tense away. and it's not gonna fly away because we tucked everything in super tight it's literally hanging out the side here uh, well i'll sit on it After lunch, we met back up with Adam to photograph a few activities on property. One thing I especially appreciate about Angama Mara is that it offers many opportunities for guests to learn more about the indigenous culture from this region. The majority of staff members at the lodge are from the Maasai communities, so the culture is very much built into the lodge itself. The girls got to learn some traditional beading techniques from some of the Maasai ladies, and afterwards they got to try on some necklaces too. That evening, we got to experience something really cool watching The Lion King while we're in Kenya. Let me tell you, watching this movie after spending a day out in the Mara among all these same animals definitely hits different. Since there are no fences at Angama Mara and animals roam freely, it's always possible that you'll encounter wild animals anywhere you go. For that reason, after nightfall, you'll be accompanied back to your tent by a security guard armed with a flashlight and a rifle, just in case. Angama Mara offers walking safaris with naturalists from the local indigenous Maasai community, and it's an amazing experience. Our guide Lashan taught us so much about the Maasai culture, and it was amazing to learn all the different ways they use the plants in the Mara, from everything from medicine to deodorant. Remove the soft part. Just the inside? Yeah, those ones. Mix with another one. Too soft. <laughs> Wow, oh, that's everything. It's really minty. And seem to have a, a wound. Mm. So we use the back of that tree. It's the one that we use to smear on the on the wound. Mm. And after it is dry, then it heals up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can feel it feel making the saliva. It produces mm -hmm. more saliva in your mouth. Mm. So this is the one that we eat to refresh mm. when you're just grazing and you're just relaxing in the jungle. Mm. Then we eat this one to refresh. Mm. This is medicine for malaria. Oh wow! Yeah, oh my God. even people with headache yeah. and people with fever. This is very good medicine for malaria. It is known by the whole Maasai Nation. Mm. Yeah. So the name of the plant is rhino ink. So this red substance is what is used by the local Maasai as eye drops. And again, 
this is local lipstick <laughs> for our little ladies they use this to put in their lips mm. and it turns the color to be uh, this orange okay so <laughs> We're laying in bed, it's in the afternoon, and there's like yes. <laughs> the most intense thunderstorm yes. I've ever experienced. Rolling thunder. It feels like it's right above us. It's like, <gasps> Yeah, it's like, you can see the lightning and like oh three seconds God. later, thunder. You saw the aesthetic side, but. I'm so scared. I really, oh I no, it's coming. Film it. No, film it, film it. Oh God, no. I don't know why the girls haven't run in here yet. Like, they should be terrified. Why are these girls so unbothered by this thunderstorm? We were very bothered. We were screaming, <laughs> we were shaking, we were like, ah! <laughs> anyways. You anyways. did not want to see how I was acting. Ah! Daddy! <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> So we're doing a little early morning photo shoot again. We've been starting each morning with coffee, hot chocolate tea, and these cookies. Tell them how the cookies taste. They taste very delicious. Very delicious, right? Yeah, we already went through one jar today, and uh, we're on to the second one. photos so there isn't a standalone spa here at Angama Mara but instead they basically come to your room and do the treatments there. Serge had a massage this morning had a mani-pedi and it was like such a vibe because it was like a light rain yeah it was like a cool breeze everything smelled so good like definitely this morning was a vibe. All right we're heading out on our first drive since we didn't go out yesterday so we're happy to see John again. <laughs> And rhinos? I know. Are you guys ready for rhinos? I don't no. know if you're ready for that. <laughs> no. So John is expecting his first baby any day now. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as he gets that call. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you out. Yeah. He's gonna leave us in the Mara. He's gonna run back home. The zebras are gonna give us the rest of the tour. <laughs> John noticed that some vultures had gathered, which often means that there's been a fresh kill. We drove over to see what was going on, and we found a wildebeest that had been hunted earlier that day by a lion. And then all of a sudden... John explained that the lion was mad at the vultures for eating his kill since he wasn't done with it yet. So that's why he was running over to chase them away.
How did it feel when the lion was right next to you? Sean, how did you feel about the lion? It was stinky. <laughs> stinky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could have smelled it, I don't think. And it's <laughs> Should we leave this part in the video? <laughs> Angama Mara has an area called the Boma, where you can watch the Maasai staff members do traditional singing and dancing, including the famous Maasai warrior ceremonies where men compete to see who can jump the highest. This event takes place at sunset, but the staff were kind enough to do one a little earlier in the day so that Adam and his team could shoot it while there was more light. Serge's parents are from Benin in West Africa, and on her last trip back home, his mom had bought these beautiful dresses for the girls. We'd been saving them for a special occasion, and this was perfect. What'd you find, Ella? Oh, <laughs> you got a little squished. Aww. This is so sad. <laughs> After our shoot, it was time for the real performance to start. That evening, we opted for a room service dinner instead of dining in the guest area. I was expecting them to just bring in some food on a tray, but instead they brought an entire dining table and chairs to our tent, and they set it so beautifully. Sean, what you doing? I am making aesthetic lemon juice with ice water in my mason jar. Okay. I thought you were going to make me a cocktail. No. I thought that was the plan. No, I'm embracing my inner Nabella. <laughs> okay, it is 5 a.m. Had a super early wake up call today. Super early. Actually, and we're not. I don't actually feel fine. But today, we're heading. Where are we going, Serge? We are going hot air balloon. I'm so excited. Yeah. It's going to be our first time ever doing this, and amazing to do it over the Maasai Mara. So. Yeah. Should be really cool. You guys excited? Yeah. All right. So this is our first time doing hot air ballooning. So they gave us these seat belts. So you put the seat belt on, and then this part is going to clip on into the hot air balloon to keep you safe. And uh, it's kind of weird. You're going to have to like lay down first, and then the balloon will come up, and then we'll. Champagne okay, would be so great, please. Thank you. Survivors get to drink, to drink some champagne. <laughs> we keep this uh, tradition going since 1783. The first balloon flight in Paris. <laughs> they have crash landed at the outskirts of Paris. They thought that aliens come to invade Earth. <laughs> so next time they flew, they brought some champagne with them. And we celebrate champagne ever since. Right, so awesome. cheers, everyone. Cheers. After breakfast, we did a quick game drive, and then it was back to the lodge. One thing to know about Angama Mara is that the dining is truly exceptional. Just about all the produce they use is either sourced locally or grown right here on property in this beautiful garden known as the Shamba. Nice. The Shamba is P1E organic. You don't do any uh, organic pesticide, fertilizer. It's spinach. Yeah. You have spinach? Mm. 
I could try. Yeah, sure. All right, guys, so we're here at the garden. Everything's organic, fresh stuff, fresh fruits. And the garden here is so lush. Like, I can't believe the, the amount of things that they're able to grow here. Yeah, so fresh. Everything's organic. Okay, we just have to pause here and acknowledge our butler, George, who took absolutely incredible care of us. George has been amazing. He took care of us. We had a lot of early uh, starts, sometimes 6 a.m., sometimes 4.30. He made sure the girls had cookies and tea and everything. He's been the best. Hey, bro, what's up? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work for you, Sean. Uh, hey, Ma. When you stay at Angamamara, you take most of your meals in this cozy guest area, where the floor-to-ceiling windows are usually left open so you can enjoy a relaxing indoor-outdoor atmosphere. But there's also a private dining room called the library. This night, we decided to eat there instead while enjoying a Tarzan family movie night. Hey, we just finished our final breakfast here. Final spread. So sad. Um, but before we head out this afternoon, yeah. we're actually going to go to one of the Maasai villages and just kind of, you know, meet the people there and kind of check out what that's all about. So yeah. that'll be cool because we've already learned a lot about the culture from LaShawn. Um, so it'll be cool to kind of see like what life is like these days. One of the nearby Maasai villages has a strong relationship with Angama Mara, so guests are able to visit by making a small donation to the village. We were greeted by two brothers who are village elders, and we were given a crash course introduction to Maasai culture. We are so nomadic, we keep on moving from one home to another home. Why? Because of the material that we use to build the houses, much is not strong. So I can say that in one home like this, we normally stay for a maximum time of 10 good years. Then the men performed the traditional warrior jumping ceremony, followed by demonstrating to us how they traditionally make fire by rubbing together one piece of hardwood and one piece of softwood. So this is an entrance to go inside, and this is how normally we make the entrances. So it is a meaning because whenever you go inside, you have to bend. Mm. And the meaning of that, you respect the work of the elders. At the end of the visit, the women of the village sang a few songs to welcome us. And we were able to browse some of the arts and crafts they had for sale. Just a heads up, the prices they ask for here are going to be considerably higher than what you'd find at the Maasai market in Nairobi, for example. Even though they sell very similar things, and not everything is actually handmade here in the village. In these kinds of situations, you can either get into some serious negotiating, or you can elect to just pay the tourist tax and consider it a donation to the village. It really just depends on your personality. Serge handled the bargaining, so he was able to get the prices down a bit, and the girls went back to the lodge with some very pretty new earrings. And then, sadly, it was time to check out of Angama Mara and say bye to everyone. These are all the girls' drawings. Uh, sad to leave John. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be back soon. We're coming back tomorrow. <laughs> but we couldn't leave without saying goodbye to the incredible photography team at Angama Mara. It was such a pleasure working with them on this trip. Unfortunately, Adam wasn't at the photo studio when we stopped by, but we got to say goodbye to Robert and Eric, who had bonded so much with the girls on this trip. strip and Sean and I were both very emotional. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we're really gonna miss this place. This was really beautiful, very life changing. Remember John from the beginning of this video? He met us again at Wilson Airport, and since we had quite a few hours until our flight to New York departed, he took us to do a little shopping in Nairobi. Those are normally we never want to buy anything on trips because we pack so late. But this this trip, trip, I want it all. <laughs> I'm also seriously considering checking bags for like once, even though we don't need to. Yeah, I want it all. That's for Ella. Mm -hmm. So cute. Really, she went. I got that. Does it have a baby too? Yes. Let me see. Look at it. It's a big one. little baby on the back. I got this bracelet uh -huh. and this calendar. It's really pretty. Mm. Love oh. these things. We actually saw them out on the drive, They're so right? Cute. All right, we're here in Nairobi. We came to this really cool gift shop. It's called Lovebird Community Gift Shop. They have the best deals. This place is really good. I just spoke to the owner. They've been open over 15 years. So come to Kenya, Nairobi especially. Come check these guys out, right? Yo, everybody, come to this joint right now. We got mad deals. We got everything like 90%. This is a terrible commercial off. for the oh, store. Like, Y'all gotta get me right now. This joint is straight fire, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and got nothing on us, bro. Our store is called Lovebird <laughs> Gift Shop. <laughs> if you'd like to check out why we're visiting 21 resorts in 2021, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.